is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to do a smartphone comparison smackdown between Samsung's two highest end Android smartphones, the Samsung Galaxy Note on the left and the Samsung Galaxy Nexus on the right. So here we have two Samsung high-end smartphones. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note on the left and this is the Samsung Galaxy Nexus on the right. This is the Verizon version. We've done video reviews of both versions and we've done a written review of the Verizon version of the Galaxy Nexus and we're going to talk about both of them even though we just have the Verizon version here. Now it's funny because in some ways this is one of the easiest smackdowns to do in terms of comparisons of features on both of these and the hardest. And we'll get into why it's hard first. First off, for those of you who are in the U.S., our home market, a carrier actually offers this phone, the Verizon Galaxy Nexus, made by Samsung. Whereas the Note is only available from importers right now, which means it's going to be expensive. It does have AT&T 3G and 4G HSPA plus 21 megabit per second, so it works great on AT&T, even though you're not going to be getting it direct from the carrier, but that expense is an issue. Now, for those of you who are overseas, you have an HSPA plus version of both of these phones available, and they're priced about the same with or without contracts, so there it's really even a harder decision. Right now, obviously, there's an economic decision involved with the U.S., unless AT&T does this pick a, does pick the Galaxy Note up, and there, it has passed through the FCC recently, so there is hope there. The Verizon Galaxy Nexus is $299 with a contract, and it is $649 if you're not eligible for a contract extension. If you want to get the Galaxy Note from an importer, it's about $700. No contract required there. It's unlocked. You can use any carrier SIM in it. And that's also about the same price as the import version of the Samsung Galaxy Nexus with HSPA+. So again, for those of you who have the money to spend and your technophiles who like to get the latest and greatest in smartphones, both the Galaxy Note and the GSM HSPA Plus version of the Galaxy Nexus are going to cost you about the same. The other big difference is obviously the size. The Samsung Galaxy Nexus is already a pretty large phone. It has a 4.65 inch display. Well, the Galaxy Note is, gee, a whole lot bigger. As you can see just from looking at it right here, this is a 5.3 inch display. So while it's actually thinner than the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, it's obviously got a bigger footprint. So if you already think that phones are getting too large and that 4.5 inch is kind of annoying, this is not the phone for you. So that's going to be the caveat throughout this. If you really don't want something that's about the size of a really small tablet, the Galaxy Note isn't for you. Now here's the last point to make the Samsung Galaxy Nexus is a big deal because it's the first phone to run Ice Cream Sandwich, Android OS 4.0. It isn't just that it's the first, it's also going to be the first, generally speaking, to get OS updates. The Nexus line from Google is a pure Google phone. That means there's no real carrier customizations per se, though Verizon does a few teeny things with their version, but not too much to talk about. And, and there's no manufacturer customization. So beyond that, you get pure vanilla Android experience here. And for those of you who are purists and don't want overlays and things that might slow down your phone, that, that can be important along with those quick OS updates. The, the general importance of getting ice cream sandwich first, well, in a couple of months, it's not going to matter so much because the Note is also going to get ice cream sandwich. But, aha, uh -huh, it won't get the vanilla version. It's going to get the touch wizified version. So that means that some of the UI changes that are present in, in ice cream sandwich here, the new look, you can see how this looks almost like honeycomb for tablets in some ways. And you've got the task switcher down here, all sorts of neat stuff. Well, you might not see that as much on the Note, but it's probably still going to have the Samsung UI on top of it. So if you like the Samsung UI, if you like TouchWiz, if you like the convenience that adds, like the pull down to access your wireless radios easily and stuff like that, well, then that's great. But if you just want that pure straight thing here and nothing added on top and you want to enjoy all the goodness of Ice Cream Sandwich, the Galaxy Nexus would win. Once we move beyond that software factor, it's kind of a slaughter. Honestly, the Samsung Galaxy Note just trounces the Galaxy Nexus. Galaxy Nexus is a nice high-end phone, and typical of the Nexus line, it has good specs, but it's not bleeding-edge kind of stuff at all. You have a 1.2 GHz TI OMAP dual-core CPU, which is a great CPU for porting ice cream sandwich, and it looks like all the first devices to get ice cream sandwich are going to be running on that CPU. And this has Samsung's famous Exynos CPU running at so far the highest clock speed, 1.4 GHz dual core. That is just the fastest CPU there is right now. Uh, we're not seeing it paired with LTE radios. There's probably some issue in, in engineering with pairing that up with an LTE radio. So things like the Samsung Galaxy S2 Skyrocket, for example, could have started life with an Exynos as the other Galaxy S2s did, but they moved over to a Snapdragon when AT&T wanted to put that LTE radio in there. So that that's perhaps an issue holding this guy back from having an LTE, and we don't know if the AT&T version will or will not, but it is just wildly faster. 
How much faster? Well, in terms of synthetic benchmarks, we really can't use Quadrant because Quadrant doesn't seem to work correctly on Ice Cream Sandwich. At least we can assume because they only got a 1459, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus and Quadrant. But to give you an idea for those of you who are familiar with Quadrant numbers, it scored just short of 4100 on Quadrant, which is pretty much an all-time high for any device. When we're looking at Linpack, we got 75 on the Galaxy Nexus, and we got 105 for the multi-thread test on the Samsung Galaxy Note. It's the first time I've seen a triple-digit number in Linpack, and higher numbers are indeed better there. For Antutu Benchmark, we're getting closer. The Galaxy Nexus scored 59.85, and the Galaxy Note scored 64.68, so almost 500 points faster on that one. And Sun Spider JavaScript, they both do very well. The Galaxy Note got a 1920 versus the Galaxy Nexus getting a 2175, and in that test, lower numbers are better. So in terms of synthetic speed, well, the Galaxy Note just blows, blows away the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. And that's even more impressive because it's pushing a few more pixels around, and that moves into the display. Both of these obviously have large displays. This is a 5.3 inch, 1280 by 800 display. That's the same resolution found in 10 inch Android Honeycomb tablets. And the Galaxy Nexus has a 720p display, which is also very good. It's 1280 by 720 pixels. They're both Super AMOLED. They call the Note a Super AMOLED HD display. And they're not Super AMOLED Plus because Samsung can't manufacture displays at that size and high resolution yet in Super AMOLED Plus. That means underlying here, there's a pentile matrix in both. How do they look in person? Well, they're both really, really lovely displays. The Galaxy Note, though, has bright, even brighter and richer colors. I mean, Samsung already really just boosts those colors a lot, but definitely you can see it even here that the colors are super duper pop. The first time I saw the Note, you know, that really stood out to me as being above most phones that are on the market right now, if not all phones. Galaxy Nexus isn't bad, and it's pretty neat. It has that contour display, just like the Nexus S. And it's a subtle thing, but it feels really good against your face. Does this have Gorilla Glass? It doesn't seem like it does. Google's not saying that it doesn't, or a Samsung Galaxy Note does. The other nifty trick here is with the Galaxy Note, this is a dual digitizer. This is a Wacom digitizer, and those of you who've used Windows tablets knows what that means. It's both capacitive multi-touch, and it works with an active digitizer pen. And we'll whip that out now. So here's the stylus that's included with a note, and it fits into this little hole right here. So you do have a place to carry it, thankfully. And this is not a capacitive stylus, which is pretty imprecise and not so great for writing and drawing. This is an actual active stylus, and you can use it for navigating around and doing things like that, but you can also use it for drawing and writing, which is really pretty cool, especially given the size of this. It's actually good enough to be used as a small sketch pad and for taking notes. So here we are on another note, and you can see I'm drawing with a pen, and in fact there's even pressure sensitivity. And Samsung has an SDK, so other applications can use it if they want to add pressure sensitivity. So very handy for handwritten notes, obviously very good for note taking and for drawing. And kind of one of those next step ahead features for smartphones, definitely. Now a few moments ago we were talking about performance and speed and synthetic benchmarks. Now synthetic benchmarks are one thing, but experiential speed is another. Both of these guys are awesome at playing 1080p video, handling YouTube streaming content, and playing games. But I can tell you one thing, that Ice Cream Sandwich is definitely quicker. And when you don't have that touch with overlay, just navigating the device is very quick. This is very responsive. You get that nice little graphical effect here. And sometimes I notice a teeny bit of lag here, which is really surprising given the fact that it's a very fast phone. Now it's fine moving around back and forth right here, but just once in a while I'll notice a little bit of lag. So though this may be a phone that has more horsepower and benchmarks more quickly, keep in mind that TouchWiz can slow things down a bit. How about speed in terms of web browsing performance? Well obviously Verizon is going to have the advantage here because they have LTE and we do have two bars of LTE right now. We're on AT&T's HSPA Plus network on the notes. So we're going to test not just the browser rendering speed, but also the network speed by trying to load our home page, which is a full HTML site, simultaneously on both devices. And here we go. And surprisingly, they're pretty darn close. That's interesting because Verizon's LTE network, on average, even with just a moderate signal like we have, we're getting a 15 megabit down versus only about 6 on HSPA Plus on AT&T. But after a certain point, enough data speed is enough data speed, obviously, to download a web page, even a full HTML web page. 
In terms of the viewing experience, you can see you do get some more pixels over here, but also text is a little bit larger, not a whole lot, but it can make a difference in terms of readability. In terms of responsiveness or pinch zooming, they're both very fast and responsive. But this is a more tablet-like experience, obviously, for web browsing. And now we're going to do a video playback comparison. We're going to play the same 1080p high-profile MPEG-4 trailer on both of these. Both have a Super AMOLED display. Obviously, you get a bigger view of it on the Galaxy Note, but... Didn't hit start at quite the same time, but you get the idea. And they both play it perfectly well. The Galaxy Note has a louder speaker. It is a bigger phone, so, well, that's only fair. What do we do? And they both look great. Of course, there's nothing like watching a movie on a 5.3-inch display. And yes, both of these big bad boys are phones. So how about phone quality? Excellent on both of these devices. I should say all three. The, the Samsung Verizon Galaxy Nexus is one of the best voice phones that we've ever heard in terms of call clarity and fullness for both incoming and outgoing voice. Likewise, the GSM version that's available overseas has great call quality. And also the Samsung Galaxy Note, the same thing can be said. Samsung with their Galaxy S2 line of phones this year has really done a bang up job with call quality and they're both equally good for voice calls. And thankfully, since they're both large phones, they work with Bluetooth car kits, headsets, you name it. So you don't actually have to hold them against your head if you don't want to. Lastly, cameras. The Galaxy Nexus has a 5 megapixel rear main camera. They both have front video chat cameras. And the Galaxy Note has the typical Samsung Galaxy S2 8 megapixel camera. And yes, it does have more pixels and it is higher quality. Thanks to Ice Cream Sandwich, the, the shoot times are very fast on the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, near instant focus and shoot. It's not bad on the Galaxy Note either, and you do get better quality photos and videos on that. And to finish off our comparison, the Galaxy Note has 16 gigs of internal storage, and it has a micro SD card slot. Nexus phones, since the Nexus S, do not have expansion slots. Happily, the Verizon version, they up the storage to 32 gigs of internal storage. is not expandable. If you get the HSPA Plus version that's available in Europe and Asia, though, you're only going to have 16 gigs of storage, not expandable. Obviously, they both have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, and a GPS. The Samsung Galaxy Note also supports GLONASS, which is... Russia's satellite system for potentially even more accurate positioning, though in our tests they both do fine. Galaxy Note has room for a bigger battery. It's going to need it with that fast CPU and that big display. It has a 2500 milliamp battery, which is certainly the largest we've ever heard of for a standard phone battery. You get 1850 milliamp battery in the Verizon version, and that needs it because it's got LTE, and LTE is a power hog like Wi-Fi is, or perhaps even worse. In terms of run times between these two phones, though, if you're looking at the LTE version versus, versus the HSPA Plus version, the Samsung Galaxy Note will last longer by several hours on a charge. But if you're looking at the HSPA Plus Samsung Galaxy Nexus, then things start to even out a lot more in terms of run times. So, not exactly an easy choice. Sure, the Galaxy Note has probably the best hardware we've seen on a smartphone yet on any platform, but it's big. I just want to reiterate the obvious there. I'm used to a big phone. I've used a Dell Streak 5. It doesn't bother me, but I know some of you guys, especially with small pockets, no man purse, well, this might just be too much for you to carry. Of course, even the Galaxy Nexus is a, is a pretty good size handful there. My personal pick, I, I use the Galaxy Note, but there are always several factors involved with that. I would not mind using the Verizon Galaxy Nexus, but we don't get good Verizon service here. And if I look at both of these spending $700 to get the import HSPA Plus version on AT&T, well, there's just so much more hardware you get with the Galaxy Note. So that's our SmackDown comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Note and the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't miss our video reviews of both of these phones, and don't forget to visit our website to read the full review.